Hey, hey, hey. Tucson Cafe. My man. Yes, sir. The usual. You know it. I saw you down at Independence Bank this morning, man. I was gonna stop and holler at you, but you look super busy. Yeah, man. Derrick Rose is opening up a restaurant down the street. Yeah? Guess who's doing the construction on it? Stop playing. Yes, sir. Congratulations. It's gonna be a perfect addition to our community, man. Very upscale. I don't expect anything less from you, bro. Mm-hmm. You see what we did with his house? His house. Uh, <laughs> so you haven't read the Inglewood Herald this morning. Mm-hmm. What about the Chicago Sun-Times? Come on, man. What did Donald Trump do now? No, oh, it's not Trump, bro. The great city of Chicago is demolishing the last of the remaining projects. That's good. I mean, they were only built to keep poor black folks isolated and controlled. Hell, I'm totally against gentrification because all it does is help pack the prisons and people are forced out of places they grew up in, man. Mm -hmm. But I'm not against the tearing down of those project buildings. Expresso? Thank you. Mmm. Brother, now this is why I come here. Your wife makes a mean espresso. Yeah. Gracias. De nada. Black folks are the only members of the human race that deliberately walk past the place of business of one of our own and spend their money somewhere else. That's true. That's why yo amo ver a una esposa ayudando a una esposo. Ayudando. Honey, this is teamwork. Just like you and Don, teamwork, sweetie. Teamwork. Sorry. Please don't get this Dominican blood boiling <laughs> over me, all right? Baby, what kind It means that I love you in Swahili. <laughs> Boy, you can't. <laughs> oh, man. Man, read the paper, man. Just read the paper. What? Why, man? Well, just read the paper, some uh, like, <laughs> Man, let me see why you trying to get me to read this paper so bad. It's just a... Mm -hmm. What the oh, Dude! Wait a minute. Don't. You spit on my shirt, bro. Eh? Hold on, man. Is this real? That's what I've been trying to tell you. Yes, it's real. If they tear down those projects, they're going to relocate all of those people to this community right here, bro. In the hopes that the property value goes down and the crime rate goes up. Everybody's moving. Man, if our property value go down, we getting rid of our aldermen. If this happens, like, everybody's going to leave. The doctors, the lawyers, the entrepreneurs like mm -hmm. myself, your boy D. Rose, Jennifer Hudson out of the house around here. The NFL player that lives in Dorothy, what's his name, Mark? Khalil? Khalil. They all gone, bro. All gone. No way, man. And you buying me a new shirt, man. No way, man. Yes way. My wife bought me this shirt. You buying me a new shirt. Man, no don't way. nobody care about your shirt. Mm. No way to this. Huh. Probably gonna have to get, like, bars on my doors and my windows, man. I'm gonna live like this, man. Hey, babe. Babe. Call and see about those Alaska pit bulls. I think pit we need some pit bulls. For what? For what? Yeah. Have you read the paper? No. You need to read the paper. Let my wife read the paper when you're done, bro. No, brother, I'm keeping this. We gonna see about this. Man, this is like redlining. That's exactly what it's like, redlining. It takes us to table seven. Seven? Yes. Redlining. Redlining is denying key services like home loans and insurance or increasing the cost of those services to residents in a defined geographical area. Hmm. Here we go. Thank you, sir. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right. Now, in theory, this could be used against anyone. In reality, it was almost exclusively a tool used to force blacks and other minorities into particular geographic areas. In 1934, that's when the practice first started, with the National Housing Act. And after that, the Federal Housing Administration was created. And then after that, we had the Federal Home Loan Bank Board. <laughs> it was that agency that created residential security maps for several cities to determine if it was safe enough to invest in real estate in selected areas. Yeah, I think you kind of see where this is going. Existing black neighborhoods were lined as unsafe and thus ineligible for financing. Did you see this? Uh, how was your day, babe? Uh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My day was good. Did you see this? What's the issue? I don't see a problem with this. You don't see a problem with this. You're joking, right? No, I'm not joking, right? That's because you didn't read it. You just skimmed <laughs> over it. I read it. Don Poole, you are a very smart woman. I know you understood what it said. I understood it, but I'm down with it. 
Okay. Sometimes people just need a helping hand. Okay. W.E.B. Du Bois says, to be a poor man is hard, but to be a poor race in a land of dollars is the very bottom of hardship. Thank you, Maya Angelou, for the quote. But you don't think that this is a well thought out plan by the man to destroy this community? We're gonna have this conversation. <sighs> Whatever. And babe, the only way the man can destroy our community is if we start to fight one another over this silly issue. We are all in this together. Okay, I'm with you. I'm gonna trust your instincts, but I don't think there's anything wrong with wanting to maintain the fabric of what we rebuilt this community on. Don, I don't wanna live around people who hate themselves. No, see, now you're assuming that people from the projects hate themselves, and they could easily assume that we uppity people hate ourselves. You see where this is going? Nowhere, okay, just forget it. Baby, I don't know what to do. Look, I'm not gonna let these politicians destroy our community. I'm not against vetting who lives here. Idea. What, you got the look in your eyes? Yep. When all else fails, turn to social media. What are you doing? I'm posting this scenario to my Facebook page. You and this Facebook. <laughs> Do you think we should allow poor blacks from the projects <laughs> to move into our Inglewood community and post? Now let's just wait and see what my friends say. Wow, your friends have no life. Whatever. Derry Titan says, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Them N-words are coming to destroy and cause havoc. We, the people of Inglewood, would not tolerate it. Inglewood would have to impose a Sharia law because- But wait, you talking about cutting heads off? Now I'm with that. <laughs> Inglewood would have to impose a Sharia law because a community that thrives on success, mm. you have to protect it by all costs. Huh, okay. I like Derry. I'm gonna add him as a friend on Facebook. No, you're not gonna add my friends as your friends to your page, no. But, but okay, you know what? I guarantee that our community is going to inspire a change in those who are moving here. And I'm sure they're gonna inspire something more in us. <laughs> you're so hopeful. Hopeful and hungry and never touch a black woman's phone. I am starving. Oh, you're cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> oh, Jesus just called me in a prayer. <laughs> I'm just playing. What would you like? Oh, gosh. Stuffed peppers, maybe some asparagus. Okay. Definitely a salad. Maybe some rice and, oh my gosh, I probably ate a lot right now. I'm so hungry. Yes, I like to place an order for uh, delivery. Tomat. What? I'm tired. Yeah, uh, so brown rice, stuffed peppers, <laughs> and yeah, that steamed asparagus. Yeah. Hey, baby, you want a salad? You, yeah, that'll be all. What's up, Khalil? You see this, man? Yeah, this some bullshit. My agent will have a problem with me, man, if all of this start happening around here, man. I can't live around here like that, man. I love the neighborhood. Don't get me wrong. Kids can go where they want to. Neighbors will watch out for them. My wife can go where she want to go without some fool whistling at her to me. You got a nice ass, baby. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? I lose all my damn endorsements fucking around this shit. Hold on. The NFL don't let you live in the hood even if you want to? They let me live, but they don't want me living next to nobody, even with double names. She, she, Ray, Ray, Quee, Quee, <laughs> Phonem. Who the fuck is Phonem? <laughs> so my wife says that we should give him a chance. Man, fuck that. You know what, listen, man. I, I'm cool with that, because all my businesses is in the neighborhood. However the case may be, I can deal with poor people that want to do better. I just can't deal with no poor ass mentality, man. Well, they'll support the business. We won't give them any other option, brother. Yeah, all right. Yep, it's fucked up. I'm gone, man. I'm for the move. Baby, he just threw the watermelon pail on Mr. Towns' lawn like it was garbage. Did you ask him to pick it up? No. As a matter of fact, the next time he does it, you pick it up for him to show him that there's a better way. They will see how beautiful Inglewood is and they will fall in love with it just as much as we do. Watch. I don't know about you, babe, but I'm excited about our new neighbors. No, I'm not. I bet they're gonna be some amazing people. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> you are so happy. I am, I'm stoked. 
Wish me luck. Hey, baby. Yeah. Um, you wanna, 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 wanna? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, well, can I at least have a kiss goodnight, dear? <laughs> Still love you. I see you. So Come look at this. Hurry up, please. Babe. Nope, I don't want to see it, Don. I don't want to see it. I cannot believe it. Babe, they are standing in the middle of the street drinking 40 ounces. <laughs> really? <laughs> and one of them is leaning with his foot up against my car. Now you got to go wash my car. Oh, okay, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Babe, they are in the middle of the street playing dice and barbecuing. Like, what kind of neighbors, do who does this? Hello, Mr. Towns. Yeah. Uh-huh, okay, yeah. Yeah, my wife is, she's looking at them right now. No, no, don't call the police. I'll take care of it. Oh, okay, all right. Wait, 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 <laughs> babe. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe this. What? Babe, there is a little one with the, with the thing wrapped around his head with the flap in the back that you tie. What, what is it called? It that would be a do-rag. Yes, yes, a do-rag. Do yeah. Wrapped around his waist mm -hmm. and shorts. Looking at Mr. Matthew's car. Hey, get Hello? out of here. Yeah, I, I. Miss Harrison? Yes. Uh, hold on a second, hold on. Yeah, I'm on the other line with Miss Harrison now. Yeah, okay, I'll take care of Oh, okay, all right, okay. All right, hello, Miss Harrison? Right, don't worry about it, relax, I got it. Okay, I, I will take care of it. All right. Where are you going? I'm going upstairs to change so I can properly introduce myself to our wonderful neighbors, something we should have done in the first place, baby. Babe, are you sure you don't want to call the cops? The police. Baby, the men of this community are the police. We take care of our community, not the police. Well, look at this. Officer Fahim just pulled up. Okay, there you have it. Yep. Case solved. Yeah, it looks like they're all going back inside, so we're good. Uh, okay, good. No, babe, I spoke too soon. Come look, hurry up, hurry up. Baby, they are, they are just standing right there on the front porch. Would you come look? Baby, you can stand on the porch. No, what? they're not. You know what, you are no help right now. Braiding another little girl's hair right there on the front. Who does this stuff? Like, Baby, you know what you should do? You should go out there and get your hair braided. Yeah, you look good in some micros. I love it. I love it. Black people are so colorful. Samad, this is not the time to be laughing right now because I'm so serious. Baby, what did you tell me? Give him a chance. <laughs> Our neighborhood looks so, so, so ghetto. Hey, Donald Trump just tweeted that if Chicago doesn't fix the horrible carnage going on with 228 shootings and 40, 42 murders up 24% from last year, he says he's gonna send in the feds. Have you read this? Come on, man. You and Omarosa are the only two black people on the planet that read Donald Trump's tweets. Man, look, bro. It's getting bad, man. I had some nightmares last night. Really? Really. The first one, I was caught in a shootout, bro. I almost died in a shootout. The second one, I was standing on the street we live, and guess what? Everybody started calling it the block. Like it didn't have a name. For just some random reason, we started calling it the block. I didn't own a coffee shop anymore. You know what I owned? A liquor store. Shabib's liquor stores. <laughs> Shabib's, I'm not even Muslim, bro. You know what we sold? Potted pork, cinnamon-flavored blunts, and, and crack pipes. I swear to God, I didn't even know people still did crack. Come on, man, that's a wild dream. That's never gonna happen The anymore. two project companies that moved on the block? It's one on the right side of me and one on the left side. The one on the right side plays music all day. As the day goes on, it gets louder. All day. The one on the left side, they barbecue. Guess how long they barbecue? All day. <laughs> that goes on until like the next morning. 
What? I ain't gonna lie though, man. That barbecue be smelling good. What? <laughs> no, for real, man, for real. <laughs> okay, look, I got a good idea. How about we get all the new residents together and see what they have to offer? I mean, everybody got talents and gifts. I like that, that's cool. As long as we do realize that, you know, rolling blunts is not a gift. Okay, but if they want to start up their own business or go back to school, we pool our resources together and we pay for the startup or we pay to send them back to school. How about that? Sound good to me. Probably need to have like a community meeting. We can have it here first. All right, I'm with that. Yeah, yeah. My only concern would be all these books, man. We probably got to move the books around because I don't want to intimidate the project people. Books? Yeah. You don't have any books in here? This is a, this is a cafe. What are you talking about? Look over there. She's reading a book. He's reading a book. There's books all over this place, man. But Melinda, Melinda, what's wrong with your husband? It's not local. Dude, they, they brought those books in with them. Exactly. It's not no local. <laughs> we need to get this together. Right. It's all. Right. That's the only way we'll get this. Get these people to come out. Hi. We're having a community event at Eldon's Cafe tonight. You should come by. Hi, little girl. What's uh -uh, your name? We don't play that. Okay. Did she? <sighs> Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. I love black people. I love black people. I love black people. Samad, what are you doing? <sighs> Baby, this is just what I need to do in times like this because who you just don't know. I love black people. I love black people. I love black people. I love black people. I passed out all the flyers and I told everybody on my block. And look at this small crowd. I told you, man, it's the books. Books are like kryptonite to some of our people, man. Man. It's like we spraying can... raid on roaches. Come on, man. We can do good with this. I'm this done. Is... I quit. This is cool. We can't live like this. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Tamala. This is my husband. We have a baby girl, but she's sick at home today, so. Um, we moved here a couple weeks ago from the projects, and I love this cafe, and I've always supported it. It's the only black-owned cafe that we have in Chicago. I'm hearing what everyone is seeing, and we're not bad people. Yes, we may act a certain way sometimes because of our circumstances, but that doesn't make us who we are. I mean, your level of success or, or where you live don't make you any better. Well, actually, it kind of does. You, what? No, I'm saying, like, I, I'm not saying we're better than anybody here. It's just that, who wants to argue with the data? Well, I've done the research. My husband and I actually taught many of the families from the projects how to grow our own food. We grew organic food in the vacant lots and even in our own apartments. We noticed that we didn't see any of that in this community, and we feel that we can bring those skills to the residents and teach them here. I mean, the food that's grown can be sold in your grocery store, Mr. Towns. I like that idea. In fact, young lady, I love that idea. I think it's a fantastic idea. It's urban farming, right? Yeah. So would you know how to, say, grow medicinal cannabis, or is it just, like, onions, potatoes, spinach, you know, tomatoes? Spinach, tomatoes, onions, potatoes, squash, strawberries, whatever you need. That's you got cool. It. That's real cool. So, <laughs> so you know how to grow cannabis. Then that's Babe. what? No, I'm asking because I have so much joint pain, and the doctor said you don't I'm. You have joint pain. I swear to God, I got joint pain. I... Okay, pain? look, just give us a chance. Black people had to experience block busting once before. We shouldn't have to deal with it from our own people. She got a point. She got a good point, man. Uh... I gotta go. Throw supplies, man. Y'all hold it down. All right, man. Right, man. Blockbusting. A practice where unscrupulous realtors encourage black folks to move into white neighborhoods or create the appearance of transition, sparking an exodus and driving down prices. <sighs> Once completed, more respectable realtors converted the homes and apartments into multifamily dwellings cramming large groups of black folks into row houses meant for a handful of people. All of these tools and approaches were facilitated by the federal government and its partners at the state and local levels. This continued into like the 1960s and arguably never stopped. Public housing projects, for instance, were placed in these segregated, depressed neighborhoods. This in turn ensured concentrated poverty. 
and all its attendant problems, such as bad schools, poor public services, poor people. Play that mumble rap trap music all night long. My head is pounding, my ears are killing me, my brain is now mush. Niggers. Hey, baby. Are you okay? Those are three new construction contracts. All right. I'll look over them later tonight. <sighs> Baby, what's wrong? Baby, what happened? Disrespect my wife. They disrespect me. I must have respect. Donald Stockton. Hello. Hey, Elden. Okay, okay, I'm on my way. Show forgiveness. Enjoy what's good. Turn away from ignorant. Disrespect my wife again. This time is a warning. The next time it won't be. <laughs> is that a threat, big man? Jay. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Now you you think you're better than us, man? No, man, you think I am. Brother, it's not about who's better than who, man. Look around. Look around. Look at your baby girl. Your woman. Our people suffer long enough, man. It's time for us to be in this together. We need to be in this together. Or is that how you really feel? Man, as soon as I brought my family up in this punk ass neighborhood, you and your boy prejudged us. Nah. And then you're gonna bring a million suited Negroes up in here like we waving a Confederate flag. Man, get your lame ass off my property. You're right, man. And I'm sorry. We're sorry. We gotta do better as a community. Hey, come down here, man. Where you was at? Man, they ride deep, man. It was, it's like a wave of Negroes. Hey, man, came. apologize. Man, I'm sorry for disrespecting your wife. 
Don't let it happen again, man. Mister? Pleased to make your acquaintance. You too, little lady. How are you? <laughs> this little girl. Pamela. Nice to meet you. Kirk. So let's try this again. Welcome to the neighborhood. I'm Samad Poo. Jay. So how about we break out the barbecue grills? Oh, hell yeah. Hey, I don't know about y'all, man, but I hung out with my ghetto neighbors about 4 a.m. this morning, man. Eating ribs. <laughs> hey, I might start by eating pork, for real. <laughs> ghetto ribs for everybody. <laughs> oh, baby, go get some garbage bags, please. Please. Yeah. Thanks. All right, man. See you in a couple of hours? Yeah. All right. Hey, baby. Thank you. I think I'm gonna like it here, baby. That's cool. I'm so proud of you. I'm just trying to do me. <laughs> Proud of how you handled the situation. I think we're gonna be all right. Yeah, there's some good people. We're yeah. gonna be fine. They are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I talked to Pamela today. Mm -hmm. I made me a hair appointment to get my hair did. <laughs> <laughs> On our front porch? Mm -mm. In her kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my baby turning ghetto on me. <laughs> my strong black husband. I am who I am because of you. Oh. <laughs> mm, good night. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Him appeal. You already know. Diamond that real. A nation can rise no higher than its queen who done climbed on the back of her king who demonstrates self esteem and the means to redeem her crown. My Taji, you ain't taking it down. I'm taking it now. I'm setting fire to this boot for whoever coming behind me denying you the truth. This is what you call entertainment. The structure for your self-destruction you proudly claiming. I can't. Cause for my little man, I gotta show him that mommy chose a better plan. And it's simply to raise a better man who's going to eventually help 